Hello everybody and welcome once again to Galactic Science 2. In this episode what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some automation on the UU matter. It's easy enough to put the UU matter straight into the, um, uh, the matter fabricator or the scrap into the matter fabricator but the trouble is if you run out altogether you have no scrap left you can't make any more you have to go to Venus and get some mining done again. So to eliminate that problem, I'm going to use the RS Gnaw Latch. So let's have a look at that first of all. The RS Gnaw Latch is basically a memory. So what I want to do, I'll come out, I've prepared it a little bit over here. I've got some scrap and I've got some level emitters and I've got some redstone, some torches and some blocks. Like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on these two here, so I'm going to make it set it up as I've got it set up it actually already set up but for testing purposes we'll do it like this so i'm going to set up two level emitters here and i'm going to put into those level emitters scrap as the item we're looking for oops wrong we'll try again missed a thing Let's do that like that so what we want is we basically we want this to start processing when we get more than one million actually we'll do one million two hundred Because that's the size of two large, um, whatever they're called, caches. So when it's more than that, we want the level to be emitted. And then we, when we, well, on the other one here, we want it basically not to be emitted, or to be emitted when it's actually more than 500 or less than 500. So when it's less than 500, it'll turn on. So those are the two criteria. So at the moment, we've got more. Than actually 1.2 million. Let's go and find out how much scrap we've actually got in the system. 2 million. So that would probably be around about enough to make, I suppose, not very much UU matter, maybe something like uh, two stacks with a bit of luck. Anyway, it's not very much. So those are the two things. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to simulate that. So I've got to, here's some redstone. I'm going to just put it down like this. I'm going to do it with a with a switch to start with and you can see what I'm talking about then. So the RS null latch basically is just uh, two blocks. In fact I'll use the, the Z-turn blocks because it's clearer and it's not looking like the floor like that. And then redstone torches. Just one redstone torch there and one redstone torch there. That's actually the, the whole design in the process. So let's just put down some more redstone here. And you'll see that one side is off and the other side is on. Okay. So these two switches at the moment are both off. So if we turn on, well, this switch is already on, so it's not going to make it. If we turn on this one here, let's come back a bit and then we can see what we're doing. It turns this one off on the right hand side and turns the left hand side off. If we turn it back off again, it stays on here. And that's what we want. And this side does the opposite. So turn it on. So this side should have turned off. That side I should have done. Hold on, I've, it is off. It is on. Oh, of course, I've done it wrong. <laughs> I need some more. I need some more redstone. I'm actually missing two pieces of redstone. The reason I made it a bit longer was because we could then see it better. That actually needs to go over the blocks here, like that. I'll try that again this time. So now that's off. Turn it on. So that side goes on and this side goes off. Turn it back off again because they're not allowed to be on at the same time. And you get that situation. So that goes off, it stays on that side. Again, that goes to this side, turn it off, it stays on this side. So that's basically the memory we want to create. So what I've done is then we can then trigger that with these two things. So let's go and have a look at actually what I've done over here. I've done exactly the same over here and this time it's connecting to this toggle bus I've left this one connected I don't need to it's just there to, for, for demonstration purposes so on this side here we've got more than set up the same way actually got more than one million it's on and this side here it's got in fact let's make it let's make it one million eight hundred thousand or something like that now we should see it go off fairly quickly because it'll use up two and this one go is set to 512. So let's just activate this now. So all I have to do to activate this is to put into this export bus some scrap like that. 
and then this should start to get scrapping. Oh, did I put in? Oh, I didn't put in the upgrade, did I? I need to put in some upgrades in here. I think I only need two, if I'm not mistaken. And that should slowly go up. Oh no. no I do need. Ah, that's right. I do need four. This one I do need four. Speed upgrades. Then it'll maintain its its levels. I think. So yeah, that's right. So it's now going very slowly up to fill up the whole stuff. And as that goes through there, any UU matter will be pulled out of here. And that's off beside this toggle bus. So the toggle bus is on the is after the import bus, if you see what I mean. So it's between the export bus and the import bus. So when the toggle bus goes off, this stops working. So let's just turn it off, for instance, by removing that redstone. And you see that's now gone off. That's got nothing anymore. And that's empty. Let's put it back again. So that should then start to fill up again, like that. So that's how it works. So we can actually then go back and look at what's happening to our, our matter. And this will stay on until it, this one resets it. So this light at the moment is on because we've got it to 1.8 million. So let's have a look at what we've got set up in here. Um, scrap, isn't it? I've got 2 million and that should be going down fairly fast. Like that. Which it is doing. Now the other thing I did, as I said I was going to move this, these processes, we'll leave that running like that, we can then see it working over here as well. I said we're going to move the um, processes that I'd done before, let's get it out, let's get my shrinking device out, and go into this one. So basically this is what I set up. This is the automation of um, whatever I wanted to do, in this case, oops I can't stand up on that one try it and jump a bit harder. So these are all industrial centrifuges, which is what we said last time. And here I've got the the item routers. And what I remembered, I could use the inventory cables to link these two together. So then you, when you click on this, you can see that it's actually, it does see the industrial centrifuge, even though it's actually not physically attached to it. So it sees both the centrifuges in here. And as you can see, at the moment they're all empty like that so it's good and then of course I did the same thing I did actually do this in the previous thing as well so we've got an export pushing them into there and it's being pulled out of there as simple as that and those are connecting them up together and in fact you have to do it this way I can't think of a way of actually getting the extra face on here to actually do that because you need the power connect at least I suppose we could do it to all but one of these centrifuges. So at the moment, all the other faces are connected together. And at the end here, we've got a tesseract, which is connected just to one place here. In fact, I had set it up slightly differently before. I put the tesseract in the middle between these two, which I thought would also work, but it didn't, because what I was finding out is the power on these was going up and then down. So you see at the moment, the centrifuge is 2,500 of 2500 and it's stable before it was going up and down like crazy and it should be stable because we're basically not doing anything so that so that's that I also put a, a ladder up here because this is the largest one I made this with um I made this one with uh nether stars so it's two two blocks bigger than the other so a little bit but it's what I needed for this one I think that looks reasonably tidy and of course it's not going to generate any lag we should test it down I'm testing now of course let's give it a quick test because that is set up to produce, um, where's my, that's over here, that's set up to produce uh, antimony ingots. So let's have a look, what can we produce for antimony ingots? We've got 16, let's see if we can produce another 16. <laughs> Can't even produce 16 because we've got not enough UV matter in here. Wow. It's going to be a long haul to get that up. I think I'm going to have to upgrade my, or add some more lasers and we can get it working a bit better. I think I'll do that. Um, we can certainly make eight, so let's just try eight on those in that case. I would like to make 14. So let's start that. So that's been processed, so they should now be already crafted, because that crafting is automatic. Let's go and check in here. We should see, if I get up high enough, these machines actually working. Yes, they are, look. And each of these should have eight in. In fact, yep. 
they've all got 18 I would expect not all of them to have 18 I would expect the last I mean, we've got 14 machines here haven't I that one hasn't got any and that hasn't that hasn't and that has so all the others got it in they should have so that's one way this one hasn't got it in why would you skip that one I don't know this one hasn't either this one has uh, it's a fairly random process as to which machines it's picked but there we are so we have eight all ticking away making the the dust which will then get blast furnished outside in the other place of course i could put a blast furnace in here as well but i think there might be room indeed there is just about and then that would keep everything together so that's working quite nicely So the next thing I suppose I've got to do, I wanted to do some more work on the armour. Now, at the moment I've got nothing in there, it's all, it's all, oh, I've just basically sorted it out, because I don't have the repair talisman in here, because it got taken out. So what I'm thinking about here, these have got quite high EMC values, 8,000, and it's not repaired. Um, these don't have any EMC values, but these do, what about the iron ones we don't have any iron in there at the moment but the the chainmail doesn't have any but we can use the chainmail anyway so let's just uh, take these two out of here like that they get refilled because there's lots of stuff in the system because i haven't emptied it out let's go in here and get a repair talisman now to feel like that and that can repair these two bits and pieces over time and i might do the same actually with some gold looks we'll try again let's get some gold out Leather won't be any use, but maybe iron would be. I've probably got some iron over here. Nope. Here I've got some iron. This has got some reasonable EMC values in it as well. So what I'm thinking about is here I've got a, an, an induction crucible furnace from Foundry. So I think I can connect that to power. It might be just below. Let's have a quick look. Indeed it is. So I can then connect some this to power. I just need the cable out of the bag. Like this, I think that's the easiest way is to put it on the side just below the machine. You connect it up, then it's got power. And then I was going to cover this up again. And then we can look at that. So that's heating up nicely and so are these so this is actually already repaired can we actually put that in there and yes it will smelt into liquid gold which is fantastic and you get quite a reasonable amount of liquid gold actually and the next thing we can do with that is let's have a look i need um i need a tank or something don't have to get rid of it let's go in here and get a tank out of here i probably got some spare tanks 13, what have we got in here? Blazing pyrothium, not so useful. We can take this one anyway. So that worked quite nicely. Let's just put one of those into there like that. We can take this out of that. And the other ones we can do are these. I think this will actually turn into liquid steel. It doesn't do it when it's, until it's completely repaired. So it has to be repaired. And we have to wait for this to actually get up because it's then done. Now, of course, that will do. And that gives us not as much as as gold but a reasonable amount so we can then take that out as well so they have their uses so the other one was iron let's just try with the iron should also work of course and i don't think if i'm not mistaken and this is then liquid iron it's not molten iron this is important for some of the recipes so these will be all liquid liquid steel you see so what I can do with these is then smelt these back, make some use out of these things. All I need to do is put the, this back in again, and then it can do its business, as it were. And these will all repair, and then they'll get fed out of the system. The only problem I've seen so far with the, what I've done here is that this, some of these things don't actually repair 100%. There's a helmet there, and there's some boots in there. I think yeah, it's about one yeah it's one off 
that the 99% isn't quite good enough. And trouble is that because these are enchanted, they won't be matched unless I do it differently. So we could do that differently and not use an import bus here. So at the moment I'm using import buses. A better way to do it is probably with an item filter. Um, a user, I think it's called a used item filter. That's not 100% sure. Let's have a look. This one, an existing item filter. Now they're fairly expensive. Basically, we've got an advanced filter, which in fact, we haven't got either of those. We need a comparator. So let's do that first of all. It shouldn't be too much of a difficulty doing this because I'm pretty sure I've got <laughs> redstone torches. I've actually got plenty of redstone torches. Get them out of the bag. I only need three anyway. So that's a comparator. Redstone is no problem. And, and the other one was the existing item filter. Now that's actually slightly more awkward because we've got to do it as a logic controller. So that's easy enough. Solarium, silicon, uh, redstone, and zombie head, or a head of some description. So let's look what we've got in the system for that. Is it soul? Yeah. We need two of these. This must be Scott Soul, so it must be soul bound. <laughs> um, redstone, I think I probably already got in the, the hopper, and a head. Let's look. 8,200 and some first creeper heads will use those and the rest was silicon and um, redstone I think it was just one of those wasn't it what you can do in fact with these is you can uh, put them in as a hopper here and just put them into the hopper and it doesn't matter what you do, you can put them in like this. As soon as you put the creeper head in, it should take them out. I think that will work. Let's double check it. Does that not go into here? Oh, it has to be a zombie head. Okay, fine. Let's take two out, actually, for the sake of it. And put the creeper head back in again. And then we can put the come along here and push those through into that. And then this time it should go out. And you saw it's gone down and everything's gone through. So you're actually producing this twice. So that's an easy automation for this when you've got a few to do. Just use a hopper and shove the stuff into a hopper and it all works very nicely, as you can see. In fact, that's the third one, no more heads. So we should have two Zid logic controllers. In a few seconds. Now, we can go and make the advanced item filters. Should have everything we need to that. We have, fantastic. I must have already got one. I've already got one in the system. And then this one we should be able to make as well. Now, it looks slightly different in this version of uh, Andrio. So the ones I've been using in the past, it looks it's quite a bit different. So what we can do with this is what I've got on here, I've got some import buses for different bits, but that's just going to import the completed ones of these. But they're not enchanted, so we should be left with enchanted stuff in here. Exactly. As you can see. Tell us what that gold helmet is doing. So what we can then do is we'll remove from one of these faces. Huh. Yeah, we'll remove this one. That's a... Uh, an export bus exporting gold and stainless. Let's remove this one. Is me. I really want to remove this one. Let's do this because that's the best one to do. And we'll put onto this face here the um, some Ender IO. Let's get it out. Item conduit. I think two will do. For for demonstration, maybe three. You probably need three. To do because I want to connect it to this chest. So here we can put the existing item filter in here. So what the best way to do this is to get a chest 
I'll probably need a double chest for this. Let's get two chests out of my bag here. And just put it down. And this becomes then the reference of what you actually want to do. So we can put into this all of the item art that we actually got that's repaired. So um, I don't know where gold armor is going to go to. Let's just see what we've got in the system here. So I've got some unrepaired gold ones. Let's take those out of there. Let's just go and take one of each. I haven't got any leather ones. Um, chest plate. Okay, eight gold. And I want, really want to do this. So I'll do it like this to get an unenchanted one because we don't care about that so much. Uh, what else? Helmets. That's built. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? You basically find the stuff, and you've only got one gold, no gold helmets. They're probably in here, actually. I probably can use these. Let's get my um, out of the bag here. Let's get where's it gone to? The other repair talisman, because I've got one for my personal stuff as well. And in these chests, uh, I've got a, I've got a repaired one of those. Paired leggings, okay, and some boots, or whatever else. So what we're going to do, I don't need to do everything, do I? Let's come along here and then put in the repaired items. So that one, that one, and then we have to put that one in. And I think that's it until these are repaired. Which won't be very long actually, because I only got six more, four more to go like that okay so what we do then do is we put them in here like this so oh one more sorry and then we take the item filter here so what you do is you shift right you right click while sneaking so you shift right click on that to capture the contents of this so you would come along here and shift right click it and you've been added to the here so it's already been added to there so now we can actually should be able to see what it is by coming along here and then placing it into here like this. Okay, so you can click show and it shows you what you've got in it, which is great. Along here you can also do this one because say ignore NBT data, but we want to actually match metadata. So we want to ignore it, that's right, but we want to match metadata. So we only want completely fixed items and always active. So that means that anything in this chest that matches that filter will come out of there and get imported. So what we can actually do, let's do it like this. I just want one more piece of this. I think I might take two. I think I'll just do it on here and remove this import bus at the back. Like that. So we just come along here and I just disable this one by right clicking at this bit twice. And then we can make this an import like that. And then everything in that filter should then come through into here. And as you can see, it's ignoring NBT data nicely on the leather boots. And it's picked up the gold and they're all repaired. So what we can then do, of course, is to bring this into here and just feed it straight into that. And that can then smelt. And then we can import that out of here. So let's just, or shall I do that? Okay, so what I need is a fluid import bus, and I should have one of those around here. It might not have enough space in our systems at the moment because I've filled it up the our storage is a lot got a lot of stuff on it. Hold on, import bus here. I want one. Anyway, it's the it's the principle, isn't it? It's what I'm trying to show is what the, the idea is here. So we can import anything that comes into that like that. Should be importable from there. So let's test it now. So I need a few more cables. One, two, three, four. Let's get up oh, my bag, don't I? I'll take five, just just in case I miscounted, which wouldn't be the first time. Right. So now, the one thing we don't want actually in here is leather. Did I put any leather in here? Oh, I did. <laughs> I should get rid of that from the filter. So we can do that as well. I'm jumping up and down. I don't like that either. Let's get off that chest. 
Where's the filter gone? Oh, wrong one. Filter. So we've got. Let's remove those leather boots from in here. Put in the steel helmet and the leggings because they're now repaired, and so are these. Sort that. Two sets. It doesn't matter actually having two, it's no big deal. So, what we can then do is take this out of here, disable it first of all, never active, remove this filter out of here like that, come along here and then shift right click again on this chest. And then it, they've been added to the snapshot. So we'll double check it now. We'll put it back into here and we'll have a show. And I've got boots on here. I can actually remove these. I think I can remove them by clicking. I have to clear it. So I clear off the filter here like that. It's gone. And then right shift right click that again onto that and then put it back in again. This time it. Oops. No, wrong one. <laughs> that wasn't clever. Okay, try again. Show. So this time we don't have any leather boots. So I get, <laughs> I'm going to get rid of the leather boots out of uh, this chest. I haven't got enough space on I? Where should we put those? I've got. Uh, oh, I've got nowhere to put them at the moment. Then I'll have to put it down like this. Good. Gets rid of them from there. So well, then we can just turn this off like this. In fact, I can reverse it, can't I? Um, I'll turn it off. Turn it back on again. Right click that one. And that will do. And then we can also insert into here. Like that. And with a bit of luck, what have we got in here? Helmets are not coming. Gold helmets are not in that. So let's just, just check that. And chest plates aren't in there, but that should ignore that one. So check that. Oh, I've not turned it on, have I? Let's have a show. That's fine. I'll just activate it then. I have to click it. So this time they should come into here. They might have actually ended up in here, of course, because I've turned that on, but I haven't turned it on the right direction. So I need to activate this to be on the excerpt. Extract. I just want to left click. Right click that and it goes to always active. So it should be pushing them out again. So the only place it can go now is into here. And sure enough, it's going into here. Now the liquid gold hasn't come out. You know, I was actually a bit worried about that. So let's see if we can actually get it out. I thought you could get it out of these machines, but maybe it's face dependent because it's still 1728. Oh, and this one doesn't, oh, oh, okay. So it doesn't smelt non enchanted items. Okay, so I basically got to turn off that from the extraction then. So we do care about MB, MBT data. So that's uh, going to fail. Anyway, I want to see if I can get this extracted from in here. No. <laughs> well, that was a bit heavy, wasn't it? I just broke the cable, but it doesn't matter. I've got to break the cable anyway to get this to get this out of here. So let's just do that. And then we can put the power down here again. Yeah. So what I want to do is I want to see if I can get into this now and go down two layers, I think. And whether we can extract from below. <laughs> it's quite difficult. So let's take another fluid import bus. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And I'm, there is another way to do it. We can do that the other way. Oh, of course, it might not go out, as I said, because we've got no capacity. Uh -huh. that, is a, that could be the problem. So what I'm going to do is get another one of these import buses here. It wouldn't be the first time I've come across it, of course. Shift right click button to there. And then we can connect this. That is a fluid import bus, yes. And then we can connect that across like this, I think. Just to test it. Yep, 
yeah, it won't go out with it because it's not got any space for <laughs> there is a way to deal with that in fact because I've got no space I've got everything's filled up and all these here are isolated as it happens I've isolated them here just on this side here with a, a quartz fiber so there's nothing here that I guess is in use for this what I can do of course there's two approaches let's try both the first approach is to give it some more storage which I can do here add a new storage um, component which actually probably isn't too difficult to do but the, the second way to do it is just the easiest way to do it is we'll use a tank like this so we need an ME storage bus on that we can do that easily enough as well so what I'm going to do here is I need to set it up first of all let's do it like this okay so we've got in here a ME storage fluid bus so we can put that on that and, that and on top of that we could put a tank or two ah before we do that we'll say what we want in it so we want to have liquid gold in here so put liquid shift, shift left click that and then they put liquid gold in here so then the only thing that's going to be allowed in here is liquid gold so you can put this tank now on top of this like this and it should come into there now is it coming in from here yes it is as it expected so i've got to remove these two because they're going to come through as that. and these should also oh it's got no power <laughs> because i broke the part and i think it's not related to the underneath side i think it was the side would work as well so let's just prove that and sure enough this gets to that point they should start to smelt as they are doing should get imported into the system and the gold should be extracted out i like that okay so, so the next problem i've got is to disenchant this stuff so the easiest way to disenchant this stuff would be doing it the way i did it before which was um basically to merge the stuff together rather than to use this i don't think we can do it that way anyway let's put some back some of this flooring here so we can put it down here I'm not going to use that block, I'm going to use one of these. I shall do it correctly. It's probably easiest to use the, the wand, isn't it? Like that. So then that's then working away nicely and filling up this tank slowly. Probably going to get other stuff in here. So look what we got now steel. That's also not getting smelted because it's enchanted. Brilliant. And so is that. What have we got in this chest here? Just enchanted stuff at the moment. <laughs> well, you know, you can actually get rid of that enchant. The easiest way to get rid of the enchant is to take two items like this, even though they're fully repaired, merge them together and disappear like that. And then you can, you can then put it into here, and then that should melt into steel, as it has done. And of course that steel's not going to go anywhere because we need another tank with steel on it. Let's do that as well. I want to show one that's the one thing I did want, wasn't it? Where they are here. I could put another one of these down here like that. And of course they won't mix with these two tanks when I put tell it I want steel in here, so I want liquid steel. That one. Then I can put that liquid steel tank. Actually, I can put the liquid steel tank on itself, can't I? I'll put it down here like that. Should right click that. You see, they don't mix because they're different metals. So that should have gone. Yep, it's gone out. We've got some more gold enchanted stuff. That's going to keep me busy for a while. I'm not going to bother doing that now. I think that's. I think that's everything for this episode. So in between episodes, in between episodes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to up the lasers a bit because I really do need this U matter and the scrap. In fact, I'm sure that the scrap has already finished. Let's have a look. I'm just think if I can see it behind me. That says it's still working. I can see the light. I can see the um, 
the emitter's still on. So that should carry on working. If it doesn't, I'll come back and tell you what happened wrong. So until next time, bye for now.